An estimated 5 million Americans have Alzheimer's disease and there's no known cure. But a new trial offers some early promise for tackling the disease at its early stages using a daily spritz of insulin. Ray Suarez has the our update. The idea behind the trial was relatively simple. Patients with Alzheimer's disease lose critical insulin in the brain as their condition worsens. What if insulin could be supplemented? Researchers at the VA Medical Center in Washington State did just that. They gave patients with early stage Alzheimer's disease a nasal spray containing insulin twice a day for four months. Early results published in the Journal of Neurology today were encouraging. Insulin delayed memory loss and other problems. Suzanne Kraft led the study at the VA and the University of Washington School of Medicine, where she's a professor of psychiatry and behavioral sciences, and she joins me now. And Professor, a lot of people are familiar with insulin as the hormone that helps metabolize fat and carbohydrate. What does it do in the brain, and what led people to wonder if supplementing it might help with Alzheimer's? Well, you're right. Uh, the most well-known role of insulin is in treating diabetes. But in the last few years, we've come to understand that insulin has a number of very important roles to play in the brain. Uh, in particular, uh, it's very critical for memory, uh, for memory to memory use to form, uh, and it also protects against the toxic effects of proteins uh, like the amyloid protein, which is the protein that collects in the brains of patients with Alzheimer's disease. Uh, and interestingly, patients with Alzheimer's disease uh, appear to have a deficiency of insulin in their brain or the insulin that is there doesn't work effectively. So that led us to wonder whether or not uh, supplementing insulin would be of benefit to patients with Alzheimer's disease, uh, possibly to improve their symptoms or to uh, ameliorate their pathology. Well, we're still early in the course of this study, and it was a small one, right? How did you pick the people who were used in this research? Yes, you're right. It is uh, early in, in the life of this area of research, uh, our, our participants were patients with very early Alzheimer's disease. Uh, they either had uh, the prodromal condition, known as amnestic mild cognitive impairment, or uh, they had very mild, very early Alzheimer's disease. Uh, so they were volunteers who came to our clinic uh, to be in our study. And once they used this insulin, what could you observe happening inside their brains? Well, we had uh, three groups. We had a group who received a uh, placebo and an active sub a substance, and we had uh, two groups who received different doses of insulin. And as you said, uh, they received insulin for four months. Uh, and what we saw were significant improvements in memory for the participants who received the lower dose of insulin. And we also looked, uh, for some of our participants, uh, at the way the brain was able to use glucose. We know that that is a problem for patients with Alzheimer's disease. Uh, and we observed, for the placebo group, uh, their brain used less glucose over time, uh, which is a common pattern in Alzheimer's. Whereas for our insulin-treated folks, uh, they had either no change in their glucose use in their brain or, uh, in some areas, uh, even an improvement. How do you test someone with mild cognitive impairment? How do you check whether they've improved or at least slowed down in their advance? What tools do you use? Well, there are a number of different uh, memory tests that have been developed, and the test that we use is uh, one of the most sensitive to the very earliest stages of memory loss. Uh, it's called a story recall test, and so the participants hear a story that's read to them, and then we ask them to tell us back right away uh, all of the details of the story that they've just heard. Uh, and then we wait 30 minutes and ask them again to recall all of the details. And so the amount of information that they're able to hold on to over that 30-minute period uh, is a very good indicator of the state of their memory. And what we observed uh, was that the 
participants that were treated with the lower dose of insulin were able to remember more details over the 30-minute period uh, after four months of treatment than uh, was the placebo group. So you had this promising initial result in this small group in phase two. Where do you go from here and how do you ramp up? What are you looking for? Well, the next phase is going to be very important. Uh, what we need to do is to administer insulin for a longer period of time than four months. We need to know that this is going to be safe uh, when it's given over a longer period. And we also uh, have some reason to believe that it will be even more effective if it's given for a longer period of time. So that's a very important next step. Uh, and our plans are to give it for uh, a year and a half. Uh, and then the other aspect of this is that we need to bring this into a larger arena. Uh, and we'll be uh, proposing a study that will be carried out in many centers across the country, uh, in centers where there are Alzheimer's research uh, centers that are funded by the National Institute of Health. Uh, and so we will be in, we'll, we will be improving the study in terms of having it uh, be translated into a larger scale and for a longer period of time. There are already millions of people who are taking insulin routinely. Is there anything we can learn from taking a look at them? Well, that's a very good question. Um, of course, the people who are taking insulin routinely are folks with diabetes. Uh, and we know uh, that diabetes is a risk factor for Alzheimer's disease, uh, that if one has diabetes, one is uh, more likely over uh, one's lifetime to develop Alzheimer's disease. So it's very important for uh, folks with diabetes to control their diabetes well. Um, and what we've learned is that if you are able to control your diabetes well, then you are able to uh, reduce the risk of developing Alzheimer's. Stressing again that it is still early days. If all goes well and the results continue to be promising, how far out are we talking about? One, three, five years before we get this as an on-label use for insulin? Well, our hope is if we're able to start this next phase of study uh, by next summer, that, that's uh, our plan, uh, if we're able to and receive funding, then within three to four years, we should have a very good idea of whether this uh, will work uh, as, as a therapy uh, in the current form that we're testing. Um, but I also want to point out what, in terms of a proof of concept, what our study indicates is that therapy, uh, therapies that are directed at uh, correcting the insulin abnormality in Alzheimer's disease may be uh, very fruitful lines of research. So I'm sure that the study will also generate uh, a large number of studies looking uh, at other ways of improving insulin function in the brains of patients with Alzheimer's disease. Professor Suzanne Kraft, thanks for joining us. Thank you.